Rick here on the Otakonathon 2013, and I tell you what, I got a great guest with me at this time. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully with this gig, she can afford to get her uh, get one of her characters some pants because apparently she plays a character that has like these rocket leg thingies, and apparently no pants. So, so, we, so, so this is where this is where the Japanese funny is going. They can make they can make little girls fly, but they can't afford a, a decent pair of trousers. <laughs> Please help me welcome the one, the only Miss Jay Saxton. Jay, how you doing today? Good. Good to be here. Oh yeah. I, I tell you what, I, I, this, this is killing me. I'm getting older, and the and the guests are getting younger. That's that that that, that kills me. But <laughs> of course, you know, of course, uh, we talk. Not as young as you think. Oh, oh, but you look so adorable. Well, thank you. And you got your little cat ears. These are my wolf ears for wolf children. Which we'll talk about a little bit mm. later on. <laughs> yes, um, of course. Uh, you know, you are you're one of the uh of the of the of the new young bloods that are entering the VA scene. Uh, well, on the show, we like to talk, talk about the past, the present, and the future of voice acting. And with people like you in the future, you got, I think the future is pretty intact. So what got you interested in acting? Um, I've wanted to be a performer um, since I can remember, you know. Uh, so I've always wanted to be on stage, singing, dancing, performing in some way or another. Um, so I think I really got into actual the actual acting bug or whatever kind of bit me around middle school when I actually started doing like plays and musicals and stuff like that. Um, actual voice acting. Um, uh, I mean, I always wanted to be like on TV or do do voices and stuff like that. Um, so it just was a matter of networking with the right people and getting an audition, and um, you know, the rest was history. Yeah, uh, when you say acting bug, I'm kind of picturing like a like a, like a spider with a with a with a cane and a top hat and a scarf. You know, like one of the Broadway looking <laughs> looking bugs singing "Hello, my baby, hello, my honey." Hello, my... <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, man, That's a, a Michigan J Frog joke. Wow. <laughs> uh. Except he's a spider this time. Yeah. <laughs> How would that work with eight legs instead of... Okay, you know what? That's, that's actually... You'd have, like, extra canes. Yeah. They'd all go side by side. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, anyway, uh, well, the first thing I want to talk about is the show Strike Witches. All right. And you play Perrine H. Klosterman. Yes. And uh, it, first off, this is a unique show because they have these little girls, and they have mm -hmm. these, like... They're called striker units. Yeah. And they rocket have the, legs. Yeah, and they have these <laughs> rocket legs, and these i guess magical cat ears yeah they um it, they actually all have different animals like some of them are cats some of them are bunny rabbits some of them are um, little dogs just depends on and, and that's because they're witches and when their witch magic sort of ignites they pop out their ears and they grow a little tail out and for some reason they lose their pants they lose their pants. They um one of the catchphrases is winning the war on pants it's like a funny little um they did like a propaganda style uh, video for one of the trailers, like a World War II propaganda style video, and it was winning the war on pants. But yeah. they can't wear pants, y'all, because they have to be able to slip into their striker units, which are their rocket legs, and go fight the, the Neuroy. <laughs> you think these kids could afford at least a pair, at least a pair of shorts? Maybe maybe one of those little tiny mini skirts. Or... The fans wouldn't like that. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. They're known for their different panties. But anyway, whatever. anyway, oh, yeah. Irene's one actually. She's one of the more modest ones. I think she wears a pair of tights. She wears like black tights and has like white that, panties underneath them. <laughs> that sounds better already. So anyway, um, um what's it like playing uh, Perrine and uh, what did you think of her character? Um, she was really fun. She's kind of one of the first uh, bratty characters that I got to play. Um, there would be many more after. Uh, she's really kind of stuck up and um, a know-it-all and kind of wants to be in charge of everything. And so it was really fun to kind of get into that character's head and, um, and also to get to do some like military-style fighting and yelling and battle cries. And she has a really cool battle cry. It's Tonnerre! Because <laughs> it's like French. Because they, they took, um, all the different witches come from different areas, and they're kind of historically based. It's kind of neat that way. That's, 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 that's really unique. I, I, I've never seen the show. I mean, I've seen clips. But I, I just want, I just, it's so cool. First off, the flying around, that's awesome. That's, that, yeah, that's yeah. some Iron Man stuff right there. I wish I had some rocket legs. You gotta have the witch power and and like the uh, to make the rocket the striker units work. So we can make our phones smaller, but we can't afford a pair of rocket legs. We can't make we can't afford to make rocket legs. Uh, gosh, come on, Japan, get on it. <laughs> we need to we need to get some of them rocket legs or find some way of accommodating pants with rocket legs. <laughs> some kind of uh, rocket no leg pants to pants adapt. Hey, 
Try, <laughs> hey, if guys start doing this, you're going to want the pants. Are you going to tell me. me that you guys want the pants? Come on now. Well, <laughs> I'm like, Perrine, I'm modest. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, anyway, speaking of brats, that's a great. This is actually a great transition. Uh, you're also known as Haruna from the very Haruna, yes. ha- Haruna from the popular question anime. Is this a zombie? And before I go, I gotta ask: Is that a zombie? <laughs> is that a zombie? Is this pitcher of water a zombie? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you were gonna show that it starts with a question. You're gonna get the. Yeah. You're gonna get the jokes. So, <laughs> what's it like playing this magical girl who kills zombies with a, a magical chainsaw? Man, that's that. I loved the fact that she had a chainsaw. I mean, she's just she's kind of ridiculous, and she gets to say some of the funniest uh, lines that I've ever got to say. And you know, she gets to kick some butt, and she has a lot of confidence and spunk. And like, I, my favorite part about her, she's just so optimistic. But then she gets to be really bossy with um, the the actual zombie character Ayamu, which is always really fun to do to boss Austin Tyndall around so it was really really fun I enjoyed playing her and I've got to play her for two seasons now and season two is almost out um, coming out in September so I'm really really psyched and uh, make sure you get that because there's some really cool extra features on that DVD we actually did a live um, action uh, little skit scene with the four main characters with me and Ayamu and Euclid Hellside and Seraphim, um, all the actors, a little skit, and then we did a live on-camera commentary. So, so you actually dressed up as Haruna, and you had the and you had the, the chainsaw. T- <laughs> well, not exactly. You'll have to wait and see. It's 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 pretty funny. It's a fun skit, and even Tyler uh, Walker, the director, makes an appearance in it too. <laughs> That's good. It's gonna be weird. So, what do you think the, the funniest line you've said is Haruna is? Oh, God, I can't remember what it was, but like any time that I get to call Ayamu a butthole. I just love saying that. It's just so funny to come out of a little girl's mouth on TV. Butthole, you know? <laughs> uh, gosh, I don't know if I, tr- if I trust a little girl with a chainsaw. It seems like anime, these, these, they're, they're attracting these people with chainsaws you've got. But this one has a mind of its own. Like, it actually talks. It's called <sighs> Mistletane, and it, like... You know, it has like a heart and a soul, and a talking it, chainsaw. Come on now, that's pretty badass. Oh uh, man, <laughs> I don't know where that falls in, in my uh, in my uh, rank of uh, people who use chainsaws. Uh, we've, uh, I think I've, that has to be in the top three. So you got Haruna from Is That a Zombie, or is this, or is this a Zombie? Greel from Black Butler, and then of course the top guy to ever use a chainsaw, Chainsaw Charlie. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, or one of the reasons you're here is because you're promoting the all new Wolf Children, and you play one of the lead characters, Yuki. So could you tell us a little bit about the Wolf Children and what was it like playing a, a little girl who, you know, was growing up, you know, half human, half wolf, not not accepted by either sides, and the struggles that it, it does it takes to live in a modern day society, and when you're when you're a little more different than many people are. Yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful film by Momono Hosera, and I was so thrilled that um, Mike McFarlane, the director, cast me in this role. It's just got, like, this sweepingly beautiful music and a really gorgeous story. Um, Yuki, uh, you know, she starts... I narrate the whole film, and I play the older version of Yuki. And she, you know, starts out saying, this is a story about my mother. And she... um, just kind of tells how her parents met, um, her dad, uh, you know, being the wolf. Um, and then through circumstances, you'll, I don't want to totally give it away, you'll see what happens. Some people might have already seen it, but, you know, it is, um, she's struggling inside, and uh, she starts out, you know, as a little girl, just being really rambunctious and, like, you know, not necessarily knowing where her boundaries are and trying to... to no, no, figure out whether she wants to be more human or be more wolf-like. And then she's got a, a brother played by Michael Solisad. And, um, you know, they go through the struggles together. She's the older sister, so she's got that mentality. Um, but I just loved um, the emotional arc of this story and getting the chance to really kind of delve deep into Yuki's character. It was really, really a wonderful experience. Yeah, I think the, uh, one of one of the iconic animals like Inuyasha, you know, had a char- had the character who was half human and half dog demon, and but you didn't really get to see much of the 
childhood aspect from him. I mean, you just you, you see him as more of a teenager. However, with wolf children, you, you actually get to see what it was like for a child who's half human and half demon growing up. And of course, I would assume, you know, even in modern day society, that they have to be labeled with all these all these stereotypes, like they're a monster, they don't bring your children near them, they, they could attack them. And, it's, and it's, it's really sad, a mother, a single mother, I believe it's a single mm-hmm. mother, Raising two children by herself, right there, that's that's an impossibility on on her own. That takes a lot of strength from the from the mother herself. Mm-hmm. But to raise them, knowing that they won't be fully accepted by either the demon society or humane society, people won't accept things that are different from them and that they don't understand. You know, and they get fear is what comes into it. You know, that's yeah. you know, fear of the unknown, and so you know that's why people might, um, like you say, demonize them and. Uh, so their mother really has to protect them in that way, and that's kind of her story, her tale of her trying to protect her children and loving them for who they are, whether it's wolf or human. And I think that's a story that we could all learn in a day and age like this. Absolutely. So are there any new shows that you're working on that you could tell us about besides, uh, is this a zombie of the dead, which is kind of a oxymoron when you think about it, because <laughs> it's a zombie, it's already implied that it's dead. So why is it a zombie of the dead. I mean, that, that's that's like saying it's a it's a mortal of the living. It makes no sense. But uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm doing a show called Hog and I. I don't know if you've heard of that one. Not exactly uh, rigging the. It's pretty the, new. Um, uh, I think season one is about to come out on DVD, and I think there's like four episodes up on Hulu right now, or you can go to Funimation.com um, and watch some of them. Uh, it's really. A funny, funny kind of lighthearted show. You know, it's about a group of high schoolers who it's called uh, Hog and I. I don't have many friends, and uh, this group of misfits gets together and they start a club and they uh, try to you know, figure out how to make friends. And you know, you see what kind of happens in the end. They're just kind of socially awkward, fumbling through all of it. And I play a character named Sena Kashiwazaki, who's kind of the uh, almost like valley girl, girlish one. She's really, really smart, but, you know, everything she says, it's like totes obvi. And oh, my gosh. Really and, um, she gets to uh, breathe. OMG, you know, she gets to breathe everything. And, and LOL. So like, yeah. Here's a picture of my foot. But she's also a hardcore gamer, so it was fun. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> so like, those experiences sound like uh, me in high school. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I was, I was awesome. <laughs> well, uh, do you have any advice for those? I know, I know you're just starting out in your career, but maybe have some advice for those who do want to pursue a career in acting, maybe get their foot in the door for voice acting? Yeah, just act as much as you can in general because voice acting is a small, small niche. And if you want to get into it, when you finally do get your chance to audition and get into the booth, you want to make sure that that's not your first time um, you know, trying that sort of thing, that you've honed your skill and your craft in other areas, whether it be, you know, in film or on stage. So just take classes, do community theater, do plays, um, you know, all of that kind of good stuff. And, you know, hopefully you'll get your shot. Yeah. And one day you may end up like like Jay playing a magical talking kitty with wings. Yep. And when we come back, we're going to be talking with our good buddy, Vic Mignogna. You're listening to the Dennis Daniels Show's Otakonathon 2013.